Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how to hide like an animal? The basic principle of camouflage is to break up your outline so you can't be detected, and there are many different types of camouflage in nature. To show you how some of these work, the production crew are going off to hide using some of Mother Nature's best techniques, and all you have to do is find them. But I've got one of these, and one of these. And when you do find them, simply click on them, and that should pull the trigger. To make the most of this, make sure you're watching it on a home computer with your annotations turned on. But if you're on a mobile, don't worry about it, we've got you covered. Over to you. <laughs> okay, that was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so although it might seem incredibly stupid for Sam to be dressed so brightly in this environment, but it does actually have real application when an animal or a person is moving, and this is called motion dazzle. Although black and white stripes don't offer any real degree of concealment, sorry Sam, they do create confusion, making it difficult for a predator to determine an animal's speed, range and heading. Zebras are the perfect example, and when seen in a herd, all of the stripes make it difficult to pick out an individual. And once again, nature has provided inspiration for man. During World War I, several Navy ships were painted with black and white stripes to help mislead the enemy. Right, back to you, take a shot. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> but where did I get you? Uh, you've got me once on the shoulder, on the arm. That's pretty impressive. You've got me in the groin as well. <laughs> One of the most difficult things to do is to remain concealed whilst you're moving. As soon as you change your position, your outline becomes more defined. But as Matt was trying to demonstrate, nature has come up with a couple of ways around this. Dragonflies employ another tactic when approaching a rival, and that is what Matt was trying to replicate. They fly directly at them, staying on the same trajectory. This way, the movement is far less obvious. In fact, they almost seem to just stay still. A stick insect not only looks like a stick, but it acts like one too. When it blows around in the wind, it wobbles like a stick. Right, it's your turn again. Time to pull the trigger. Or the mouse. That was payback for all of the zoo-la-las. Yeah, you got me four times, Maddie, that's fair. <laughs> okay, so Sai is using a two-way camouflage technique known as countershading. Sai, can you turn around? Perfectly demonstrated. For animals that live in trees or in the air or even in the sea, predators and prey can appear from above and below, which means they need to blend into their environment from two very different angles. A shark seen from above needs to appear dark blue to blend in with the deep ocean. But if it's seen from below, it needs to appear lightly coloured, even white, so that it matches the bright ocean surface. Some ocean goers take this to the next level. Rather than just appearing to be lighter underneath, they actually produce light. They use bioluminescence to blend in seamlessly with the sea above. Right, it's back to you. Chris, you're right. Where did I get you just there? 
Yeah. Okay, so Chris is employing simple, disruptive coloration. By matching his colours to his surroundings, he's able to break up his outline and blend in. Now, the leaf-tailed gecko takes background matching to another level. Are you sure you're okay? Its body is covered with these tiny frills so that when it lies down in the bark, the flats of skin blend in so it doesn't cast an obvious shadow. Many species actually mimic objects in their surroundings, like the dead leaf butterfly. Some of them have holes in their wings for added authenticity and their patterns will look a little bit like the fungi that will grow on trees and leaves around them. When they rest, their hind wing will touch down on a branch, forming a neat little stalk. OK, it's time for another shot. Are you right, Sai? Are you okay in there? Where did I get you? In the nether region. <laughs> so, um, Sai is actually wearing a ghillie suit, which is used by the armed forces, and it relies on self-decoration. By putting bits of your surroundings onto your body, you're concealing yourself really effectively, and the decorator crab does this especially well. It drapes seaweed on its back and attaches bits of detritus to its shell so it can hide on the sea floor. Some even encourage other sea life to hitch a ride, including coral polyps and sea anemones. Caddis fly larvae camouflage themselves by decorating their home with tiny bits of gravel from the riverbed. Apart from a tiny difference in size, they blend in perfectly. Right, see if you can hit someone else. For more amazing videos from Earth Unplugged, then just click me to subscribe or I get a shot. So any time now would be great, guys. Any time now. Click subscribe. Ow! Oh! Ow! Go! Subscribe, everyone! Go and do it! Ow! Oh! Oh! Ow! I can't believe you didn't press it! If you didn't subscribe then, you have to now. We'll see you soon for more amazing wildlife facts. Bye!